And we're on all three platforms? Mm -hmm. No way. Oh, okay, everybody. Hey, this is really cool. I'm really excited about this. The boys got it downtown this week. This is the first ever Festool Live, because it is Friday, and it is noon. Happy Festool Friday, everybody. Happy Festool Live. But here's what's wicked cool. This is our first, I'm going to call it simulcast. <laughs> you like that, Big D, huh? Okay, and I'll explain in a minute. Everybody, let's talk about the room. We have Big D over here hey, on our first ever simulcast. We have the unit. Yes, his name is Chris. Yes, him and Emily are still engaged. Over here, we have Minnie. <laughs> Min Min's here. Woohoo! Boy, that's a classic shirt, Min Min. I know. Oh, man. I'm going to work into fitting in mine. Mine's a, an extra large. I'm still in a double X. Hey, and let's call out Brent online, answering all your questions. In the room, once again, we have Spocky and we have Peyton. Say hi, Peyton. Yeah, you're beautiful, doggy dog. You are too, Spocky. All right, so when I say simulcast, I got to explain a few things. You're on YouTube, maybe. You might be on Instagram. That's why, because we have to go portrait on that. And we also have Facebook. It's the first time we've ever done this. It is actually live, live on all three platforms. What we used to do is just shoot it live on YouTube and then about an hour later post it on Instagram and Facebook. But man, we are stepping up our game, right guys, gals? Yep, yep, yep. Woo! All right, so welcome to episode number 123. Boy, look at all these numbers I get on the, on the board. This is episode number seven of Lost in the Catalog. And uh, I already have Lost in the Catalog 8 already planned. So I was joking around this morning with Robert. Robert said, what episode Lost in the Catalog is this, 420? <laughs> so hey, guys, I just want to let you know, we have been planning out the entire year. All our lives on the road, we're coming to see you a lot more this year. And we got so much planned, and I am dying to meet all of you. So, remember how I call out a department here at Festool and say, hey, kudos and kudos? I'm gonna call another group or a community out, and it's you who are watching today with us. I wanna thank you for all your kind words you sent to us uh, year round. Uh, I've met a lot of you last year. In fact, I look at this board now, and <laughs> I think the three of us know, and four of us know a lot of you who have come up to us and said hello. So thank you so much. It's meant so much to us. So I'm calling you out, the YouTube Live, Festool Live community. Did that sound good, Minnie? Yes. All right, let's get going. Okay, so there's some stuff that seems wicked simple in here, but it's in the catalog and people go, hey, you need a bag for your rails. And I go, we do, we've had them forever, but we've updated a few things on them. So the first one I'm gonna show you is we have two types of rails. And this is very, very important going forward this year because we have bags which is, this is the FS rail bag. Let me open it up. You put in our traditional FS rail, okay? Just like that. It fits two 1400 rails, or you can throw a couple of shorties in there. You have an extra compartment here for maybe some clamps or your rail connectors, okay? Or whatever you want to put in there. Okay, maybe a couple of beers for after the job. I don't know. It's not insulated, but it's okay. Derek, don't say what you're thinking. Okay, now, on here we have the FSK rail bags, and we have two of them, all right? Now, the first one is the FSK 420. It fits the 420 rail. There's a little more padding because we got more knobs and buttons here on the bottom. So it's very protective for your FSK rails. Later this year, that's gonna be very important. Hint, hint. All right, and then we have for the larger FSK rails, we have the 670 bag. It fits perfectly the 670. Yes, you can throw 420s in there as well. But those have always been in our catalog or on our website. So sometimes when I say, hey, this is lost in the catalog, seven, <laughs> okay, it's actually lost in the catalog website too. Because sometimes when you're, you know, you're looking at like a, an OF 1010 or a Capex, hint, hint, sometimes these things pop up and you go, what the heck are those? 
I'm going to explain today. Okay, let's step over here. Next one is the Capex. Woohoo! So I think you know this. I think I called this out when we went over the Capex, our deep dive on the Capex. But when you look at the bottom of the KS120, right here are these little pods. Those fit into the matrix of the MFT uh, dog holes. Okay, but we also have, and I, I can't remember, I should have looked it up earlier. We, this is called the, originally it was the MFT Capex. Then I think it turned into the MFT Mini. In other words, it's the smaller one, but it's got a couple extra holes on here. These pods still fit in a traditional matrix. I actually put my thing on there so you could see this. Now, this isn't about the smaller table, but it kind of is because these extra holes really come in to play. And um, uh, I'll show you why. This is our traditional ratcheting clamp. We have the screw clamps, but this extra hole, and this is why the Capex was designed this way. And maybe you have a Capex and don't know this. You see this little recess right here? I could take the clamp, go like this, bring it up, and those clamps that you probably already have will hold the capex to the table. And check this out, it doesn't impede the Midas scale. That's one way of locking it down. So when I was doing, lost, uh, setting up this uh, episode, I wanted to talk about these. This is, for me, this is what gets lost in a catalog. Or somebody always asks, hey, what the heck are these for? It says capex knobs. Okay, and you get two, and the pat number is 494693. All right, you get two knobs, and you get the knob, but the screw. So come in here, unit, right here, check it out. You see that little recess, that little hex recess? This, it hovers right over one of the MFT holes, and I could take that, Chris, can you get that? And that's another way of locking the capex down if you don't have any clamps. Okay, so it's just a really neat system. Whew. <laughs> what, Min, Min, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. So now you know what the knobs are for. What's, what's Sparky doing? I don't know. Sparky, you wanna talk about the edging plate? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he is excited, okay, so. Over the years, I think I've, well, I've done a lot of training on this. And I had to check because this wasn't in the catalog last year, but it was online. And I checked, and it's a still an active number in our system. And I checked, and a lot of dealers still have these three pieces. And it, I started thinking about this because somebody asked me, will, will these pieces fit the 1400? So I'm going to cover a lot with this. This is called the angle arm. This is the edging plate, and this is the chip deflector. Big D has all the part numbers uh, listed below in the description, correct Big D? Yes, sir. Okay, and I, I think I got all the numbers for them on the bags and the knobs. So here's, the, I'm gonna go back an episode or two of, well actually the, la the last episode of Festool Live. Uh, uh, no, last lost in the catalog, number six. Hey, Minnie? Yes? Is that confusing? That's my math. No, because <laughs> I'm getting a little confused of all these episodes. Okay, so the original, well, the base that comes with the set with the, um, the MFK 700 as the set. This is, and I've covered this several times, this has a 1.5 degree, so it trims edge banding at a 1.5 degree angle that way there you don't cut into your substrate or you have less tendency to cut into your your uh, decking or your counter or your board last episode lost in the catalog six i covered the zero degree base and what that i showed you on how to set this up is if i was cutting a thicker piece and the measurement on this is i believe I got 14 millimeters. The depth is 15 millimeters that you cut. That's the biggest piece you could cut with the MFK. You gotta get the right bit and you gotta dial it in exact. But when you, if I did that with the one and a half degree base on something, a thicker hardwood banding like this, it would, you could see the taper ever so slightly. Especially if I did top and bottom. You can go back and watch that episode. So somebody asked me, what if I wanna 
a thicker banding or a thicker nosing on something. Say I'm doing a, a drop edge on a counter, let's just say this is a countertop, and I had a drop edge like this of a nice piece of hardwood, maybe this is mica or whatever, and I want to trim that. There's machines out there you can get, they're called lipping planers, and they're like 500, 600, 700 bucks a pop, but it trims this flush to this deck, okay? What we have is this edging plate. And it allows us to trim this up to, I believe, an inch, if not a little bit more, okay? I have on here, let's take a quick measurement. I have here, I think I got uh, 20 millimeter. Is that 20 millimeter? Yeah, you got that? You get that unit? Yep. Good job. Okay, so I got 20 millimeter on here. I can't do that with the MFK is what I'm getting at. So I drop the bit on here, just a, a straight bit, doesn't matter. The diameter, the bigger the diameter, the more RPMs or outside tip speed you have. What I want to do is I want to show you how to set this up. So the first piece is this angle unit. It goes right here where the support bracket goes. It goes right in here like this. I'm just going to screw it on with this knob. Big D, you getting some of this? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Big D, he's got that overhead for us. All right, and I usually set it up right about there, but you have that movement up and down. You can also use this for something else, and I may have the opportunity to show you that at another Lost in the Episode, Lost in the Catalog episode. Okay, so let's talk about the next piece of the puzzle. It's this edging plate. It's got a flat spot here. When I first saw this, eons and eons and eons ago, I, go, I think it was 2003 I first saw this, I went, how the heck does this go on the 1010? And then all of a sudden I figured out right here, look, see how that's threaded? Big D, can you get that? See how that's threaded? Th it threads on with this. This is your micro adjust. And this knob locks it on the flat. So it's gonna go in this orientation. But when I set this up, I loosen this like this, and I set it up like this, and I push it here so it grabs, and then I start to tune it in. You can actually see it start to walk in, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it both ways. I want to, uh, I'm going to show you rough adjustment, then closer rough adjustment, and then we'll do some test pieces for final adjustment. You can dial this in in tenths of a millimeter with this knob right here. Okay, so let's look. You know what that is right there, right? That's your center line. I have one back here. So my first rough adjustment is just to get that center line just like this. I'm gonna do it back here. So okay, so there's my first rough adjustment. My second one is I get a flat piece. I'm gonna bring it like this so we can all see it. I'm gonna adjust my bit, okay? And of course, if I put this on here like this, <clears throat> it will cut into this material. What this allows me to do is run the OF1010 in a hor horizontal position to trim this. So, I'm going to take it like this. Big D, you're going to probably get a good one like this. Chris, I'm going to have you come in here, okay? This is still loose, and I'm going to dial it in like this and get it a, so I'm a little bit proud when I trim this. Then I'll show you how to dial it in, and I'll show you a wicked tip that I learned the hard way. Okay, so I see how I have that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the bit ever so slightly, and I'm going to dial it back a little bit more. So when I trim this first time, it's gonna be a little bit proud. I'll take my, my block here. See the flat spot? I'm gonna lock it in. Now, this is the thing I'm going to teach you today on this. This has a little bit of play and this has a little bit of slop. So what I wanna do is knock out the slop. So whenever I adjust this and I release this knob, I put pressure with my thumb like that and lock it. That way there, I don't have that movement or slop as I call it, so I can dial it in so precisely. You'll see momentarily. So, this whole apparatus will fit on the 1400, but I will suggest not to because I'm gonna put on the next piece of the puzzle and this doesn't fit on the 1400. In other words, this prevents the dust from going up in your face and actually gives you phenomenal dust extraction. When you put this on, okay, you're gonna see this curve follows this curvature, and you can see the opening where the dust goes into the dust chute. So when I put that on, 
Let me show you. This part here, whoopsie, locks onto this base here. And this does not fit on here because this is too thick on the 1400. So when I slip this on, I tuck this in here like this. I start right here, so, and I push it on. And I, I used to line it up with that, that center line like that for a start, but I bring it right in because that will partially be blocking that dust chute. So I bring it all the way and I make sure it's locked in. And that's how this works. Now, if I had more, uh, lever, um, more or a taller bit, I would move this up and down, but I like to get it dialed in just like that. And that is ready to go. Um, I checked the depth earlier and Chris, can you get right in there? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release this. I'm going to bring it in and sometimes I, I get the depth set just right and I lock it in like that. I don't want to cut into that material. All right. That is the basics of setup, but let's run it so I can show you how to, to get it dialed in. Uh, I've been using this for a while now, 27 millimeters fine, but you can use a 36. It all depends on how much you get to trim down. Always, 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 when you hook up to a router, of that plug it cord, make sure it's cycled off first. Always safety first, everybody. Okay, remember, a full quarter turn with that lock on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of test. So, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna lock it on. And I'm going to do a little test. Okay. Wow. That's dialed in halfway decent. But remember while I was teaching with edge band and use that, that fingernail? I have a little catch. Now, some people may say, hey, that's fine. I'll just scrape that or hand plane it. But what? you know what? That's too much work for me. So what I'm going to do, and maybe we can see this. I put a little plus and a little minus. Minus means... I'll go shallower, and plus means I'm going to go deeper. So when I do this, I want to make sure I put that pressure here. So I'm going to release this ever so slightly with that pressure, and I'm going to go this way. I line it up with that hex, and I'm going to dial it about a tenth of a millimeter and lock it in. That way there I'm guaranteed of losing the slop. I'm going to take that back over. I mean, once you set this up, you're good to go for all your pieces. You can hear it. I'm already cutting. And I'm just going to pull it off again. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. I know you can't feel it <laughs> like I can, but there's a very slight catch. And someone may say, oh, that's enough. No, it's not. Watch. This is how easy it is. Pressure here unlock it here, and I'm going to go another tenth of a millimeter. So once you set this up, you are good for the day. And wh why are you gonna create all that extra work when you can do it with one machine? Absolutely perfect. Look at that, absolutely perfect. And then when I sand this, I'll sand this. It's flush already, and there you go. I can put a round over, chamfer on that. I got the perfect edge, and it's thicker, which is really impressive. So, once again, it will fit the 1400. It's just that the 1400, you get a lot of pressure and it wants to pull you off. And you're gonna have all that chip flying around. The dust extraction is not as great as it is with the OF-1010. So I highly recommend it for the OF-1010. And it's just something else, another, another killer accessory that I didn't cover when I covered the OF-1010 before. Or maybe I did, I just forget. <laughs> I didn't go back and look at it. So hopefully that'll help everybody. And wow, this is a lot longer <laughs> than I thought it last. Okay. Wow, 
That was amazing. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to call off the first board. Holy macanoli. Hey, uh, I just want to remind everybody, I made sure we had all the numbers. Hopefully I had the right numbers and <laughs> Derek just got them on uh, the description. Um, so we'll see how it goes. There's four links. There's four links. Yeah, yeah. Links right to the page, so they're good to go. Perfect, links to all the pages. Okay, so we have Peter from the Netherlands. We have Doug from Zionsville. Mike M from Austin, Texas. Des, we have you from Harrogate, England. Des, he, Des is always there with us, isn't he? Thank you, brother. Hey, we have Joe from Waseca, Illinois. John from Vermont. Oh, wow, Dana. How are you, Dana, from Yacht Washington? We have Anthony from Staten Island, New York. Hey, we have Martin from Switzerland. Dirk! Woo! Dirk from Dayton. Hey, Andrew from Toledo, Ohio. Larry from Sun City, West Arizona. Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Chris from Malta. Chris, you're always there. Thank you for always being here with us. It makes our day when Minnie puts your name up there. George from Naples, Florida. Brian St. John Moss from the Bahamas. Guys, that, you'll meet him. He is my brother from another mother. House of Martin, WW Denmark. Minnie, what does WW stand for? House of Martin Woodworking, Denmark. I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. Keith from Bozeman, Montana. Hey, one of these days I might do this for a living. Hey, hey, we have Tom and Kelly from Eatonton, Georgia. Aronzo from Mississauga, Ontario. Ahmad and Yusuf from Kuwait. Hey, I know you guys. You're awesome. Steven from Boulder City. Soren from Denmark. Petri from Yolarvi, Finland. Spatrician, that's you, Willie baby. Norman from Los Angeles. Joe from Akron, Ohio. We have Jacob from Rhode Island. We have Jason and Yana from Granite Falls, Washington. How you guys doing? We miss you. Hey, we have Mark. Ooh, there's somebody who's challenging me. Krimpen on Delec, the Netherlands. I think I got it. Julian from Lausanne, Switzerland. <clears throat> Blake Weber from Novato, California. How you doing, Blake? We have Brian from Mommy, Ohio. Gary from Beers with the Boys. I'll see you tonight. Johnny from Illinois. Dan from Wrightstone, New York. Steve from Bermuda. Alex from Kansas. <clears throat> oh, Minnie, I know who you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. He's a great dude, man. He was one of the early adopters, huh? Yep. Okay, Rob from South Devon, England. And Minnie, I'll freak you out later because I know, I know his last name, too. I don't know. Michael from Paris, France. Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey. Sorry to uh, wake you up, Spocky. Daniel from Yorkshire, UK. Jeff from Clarksburg, Maryland. Jason from Fenton, Michigan. Dick from Katy, Texas. David from Israel. Dave from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Jevin from Upper Sandusky, Ohio. How you doing, Jevin? Oh, man, he makes great brisket, dude. Rick from Sunny Blackpool, UK. John from Carmel, Indiana. Brent from Rochester, New York. Chris from Virgins, Vermont. Martin from Walla, Walla, Washington. Ronnie Fulton Woo! from Georgetown, Kentucky. How you doing, Ronnie? Hey, I heard you're coming to town soon, brother. Rod from Morgan Hill, California. Dale from Swaddle Coat, England. Paul, Cheryl, and Sam from Arizona. How you guys doing? Dan from King Bend, Arizona. A lot of people from AZ. Matt from Newark, Ohio. Jason from Puyallup, Washington. Ha, ha, ha. Mr. Jenkins, Gary Jenkins, how are you? Terry from Salt Lake City. Mike from Park Ridge, Illinois. Oliver from the French Alps, George of the Jungle, San Jose, that's so cool. Jared from Miniton, Minnetonka, Minnetonka, where is that, Minnesota? I don't know, I forget. Uh, Jan from Denmark, the Warped Woodsman, how you doing, Johnson's from Portland, Oregon. Uh, Gerald from Indianapolis, how you doing, Gerald? Where's Indianapolis? South of us. Hey, Eric, I mean Eric from Sanaba, Mexico. No, <laughs> did you guys see that one? No accent, Dave and Gwen from West Virginia. She thought I had an accent. I whoa, you have a wicked accent. Joey from South Texas. Chris and Rick from Newfoundland, Canada. 
Oh my God, Mitty, these things keep getting wicked. Nate, custom cabinets from Virginia. Steve from Poole, Dorset, England. Gail from Eden, New York. Willie from Freeville. Randy Hyman from Illinois. Hey, Randy, how the heck are you, man? This is unbelievable. He's, uh, Roll, there's another great dude. Roll from Roll Vega, the Netherlands. Hi, Roll. Happy 2023, brother. Olivia and Mike from Tynesboro, Mass. Massachusetts. <laughs> Tony from Australia. Dave from Na um, Nampa, Ohio. Apo Aka, Finland. War uh, Apo from Aka, Finland. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. Kenneth from Oak Park. Oak Park, Illinois. Kurt from Rochester, Michigan. Mike C. from Winchester, Virginia. Robbie from Corneth, Texas. Mike from Iowa. The Maestro from London, Canada. We have Tony from Noblesville. How you doing, Tony? Jay from Manchester, Connecticut. Brooklyn. Chef Shannon Ambrosio. How the hell the heck are you? I almost said hell. Okay. Hey. <laughs> hey. He's from New York. He understands. Okay. Chris from Sopran, Hungary. Adrian from County Cork Island. Adrian, I was there this year. Jake from Puxatawney. Pennsylvania. Brian from Pumpenville, Australia. Eric from Columbus, Ohio. Chris from Oman. Hey, that's a first. Oman, right? Oman, right, Minnie? Yep, yep, yep. Woo! Chris, welcome from Oman. Or Oman, I can't pronounce it. Norman from Huntington Beach, California. Jake from Ventura, California. Scott from Colorado. Ed from Ohio. UK, the, uh, what's that? WK from the Netherlands. Tim from Lakeville, Massachusetts. What else we got? Um, wow, Minnie. Um, Holy moly, we have S.W. Geldof from the Netherlands. Or Southwest Geelof, the Netherlands. Rod from Morgan Hill, California. Greg from Holyport, UK. And Petra from the Czech Republic. Wow, everybody. Mm -hmm. I think that's our biggest ever. It was a huge day. It was a huge, it was, it was huge. It was huge. It was huge. Okay, everybody. That's another wrap. I always say this. And our group of Festool Live people who are the core is Big D, Chris, Brent, Minnie, Spocky, and Peyton, and myself. We want to let you know we love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. It's going to be live. Man, I think we're going on the road a lot this year. So we have so much planned. It's ridiculous. We got some cool in-house stuff happening. Thank you very much. Have a phenomenal weekend. Stay safe. And we'll see you next week, Friday at noon, for Festool Live, baby. Woo! That's a wrap.